Hello everyone, and welcome to our channel. Today, we'll tell you about how Voyager 2 just made an impossible discovery after 46 years in space. Let's get started. Plans for a grand tour of the planets, in which four very advanced spaceships would have explored the five outer planets in the late 1970s, were scrapped in favor of the two Voyager spacecraft. NASA dropped the idea in January 1972, mostly because it was going to cost a lot of money, about $1 billion. Instead, they suggested sending only two spaceships to Jupiter and Saturn in 1977. The two spaceships were supposed to go deeper into the two gas giants than the two pioneers did. In 1974, mission planners thought that if the first Voyager worked well, the second one could use gravity assist moves to get to Uranus and then Neptune. Each ship had a full set of sensors to record data about the planetary system's magnetic fields, their atmospheres, moons, and other things, as well as a slow-scan color TV camera to take pictures of the planets and their moons. The two spacecraft were based on the older Mariners and were called Mariner 11 and Mariner 12 until March 7, 1977, when NASA Administrator James C. Fletcher, who died in 1991, stated that they would now be called Voyager. Three radioisotope thermoelectric generators, or RTGs, made power. They were placed at the end of a boom. On April 24, 1979, Voyager 2 started sending back pictures of Jupiter that would be used to make time-lapse movies of how the atmosphere moves. Voyager 2 came closer to Jupiter's moons than Voyager 1 did on its way into the system. Scientists were especially interested in learning more about Europa and Io. It sent back great pictures of Jupiter's whole system, including its moons Callisto, Ganymede, Europa, the moons Io, and Almalthea, which Voyager 1 had already looked at. Voyager 2 came closest to Jupiter on July 9, 1979, at 2229 UT. At that time, it was about 400,785 miles away, which is 645,000 kilometers. It sent 17,000 new pictures and new details about the planet's clouds, four newly discovered moons, and ring system. The pioneers didn't notice many changes in the atmosphere from one trip to the next. But Voyager 2 saw a lot of big changes, such as the great red spot moving and changing shape and color. Using the cameras on both Voyagers, at least 80% of Ganymede and Callisto's surfaces were mapped to a precision of about 3 miles, or 5 kilometers. After changing its direction two hours after coming closest to Jupiter, Voyager 2 sped towards Saturn. Its path was mostly determined by a decision made in January 1981 to try to send the spacecraft to Uranus and Neptune later in the decade. Two years after it left the Jovian system, on August 22, 1981, it started taking pictures of the moon Lapidus. Voyager 2 did the same kind of photo mission as its predecessor, but it got about 14,290 miles or 23,000 kilometers closer to Saturn. At 121 UT on August 26, 1981, at a distance of about 63,000 miles, Saturn was at its closest point, or 101,000 kilometers. Voyager 1's ring, spokes, and kinks, F ring, and shepherding moons were better seen by the spacecraft. Voyager 2 suggested Saturn's A ring was 980 feet thick. The probe traveled through Saturn's rings at 8 miles per hour as it flew behind and up past Saturn. Thousands of micron-sized dust grains vaporized and impacted the spacecraft for many minutes, creating puff plasma. Attitude control jets automatically fired multiple times to stabilize the vehicle when particles adjusted its attitude. Voyager 2 photographed Hyperion, the hamburger moon, Enceladus, Tethys, Phoebe, Helene, Telesto, and Calypso during the encounter. After two planetary encounters, Voyager 2 was headed to Uranus, a four-and-a-half-year voyage. Its Jupiter encountered was optimized to enable future flybys. Voyager 2 had only five-and-a-half hours to examine Uranus, which shaped its geometry. Voyager 2 passed Uranus first. Signals took 2.5 hours to reach Earth on November 4, 1985, when long-range observations began. 400 times less light than terrestrial. 
1759 UT, January 24, 1986, Uranus came within 50,640 miles or 81,500 kilometers. Voyager 2 discovered 10 new moons named Puck, Portia, Juliet, Cressida, Rosalind, Belinda, Desdemona, Cordelia, Ophelia, and Bianca, all Shakespearean references. It also discovered two new rings and a magnetic field tilted 55 degrees off-axis and off-center. The probe found a boiling ocean 497 miles or 800 kilometers below Uranus's upper cloud surface. Voyager 2 also took pictures of Miranda, Oberon, Ariel, Umbriel, and Titania, five of Uranus's larger moons. After seeing Uranus, Voyager 2 made the biggest change to its direction in the middle of its journey on February 14, 1986. This put it on a precise path to Neptune. At 356 UT on August 25, 1989, Voyager 2 sailed about 2,980 miles or 4,800 kilometers over the big planet's cloud tops, the closest of the four flybys. It was the first thing made by people to fly by the planet. During the flyby, the probe found four more rings and six new moons. Their names are Proteus, Larissa, Despina, Galatia, and Naiad. It was found that the winds on the planet itself go 680 miles per hour, or 1100 kilometers per hour, which is much faster than what was thought before. Scientists found that hydrogen was the most common element in the atmosphere. However, the blue color of the planet was caused by a big amount of methane. Photos taken by the Voyager probe showed a volcano made of nitrogen ice on the surface of Neptune's biggest moon, Triton. Triton is the body in the solar system that is known to be the hottest. The flyby of Neptune marked the end of Voyager 2's meeting with planets, which had been going on for an amazing 12 years while it was in deep space. So, the spacecraft had finished its grand tour of the solar system at least in terms of the goals it had reached. After traveling through the Neptune system, Voyager 2 dropped below the elliptic plane and left the solar system. After the encounter, which happened about 35 million miles or 56 million kilometers away, the Voyager 2 sensors were put into a low-power mode to save power. NASA changed the name of the whole mission to the Voyager Interstellar Mission after the Voyager spacecraft left Neptune. Voyagers 1 and 2 and Pioneer 11 were all heading in the direction of the solar peak, which is where the Sun seems to be going in the Milky Way galaxy. Because of this, it was thought that they would get to the heliopause before Pioneer 10, which was heading towards the heliospherical tail. In the 1970s, four satellites were sent into space to find out more about the universe outside of the solar system. After 21 years, in November 1998, the non-essential instruments were turned off for good. At that point, only seven instruments were still working. The Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 probes were both made so that scientists could learn more about the furthest parts of the solar system. Voyager 2 was sent to find out more about Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. In the same way as its predecessor, Voyager 2 set out to find and study the most distant parts of our solar system. And that's it for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like and comment down your thoughts on this topic. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching.